Hello, welcome to Wardrobe School. Here is where you can learn easy ways to sew clothing, to sell, or to wear yourself. I'm Vanya, and today we're going to talk about sewing machines, especially vintage sewing machines, because I hear from many of you guys that you wanted to buy a sewing machine or which one to choose for yourself. And so I figured I'll do uh, a series of this, like uh, a few classes about how to choose a sewing machine. And the first one we're gonna talk about is the vintage one. First off, what is a vintage sewing machine? Look, what I know it's vintage, it's something that's at least 20 years old, right? This is when it comes to clothing and accessories and, and stuff like that. But then the other day I read about this and apparently Etsy came up with this, so I'm not sure. But a vintage sewing machine could be as old as 20 years old or 100 years old. Yeah, so then when you see a used one, you're going to figure out if it's vintage or not. And I'll give you a, a few tips today, okay? So this year, because of the whole pandemic thing and the whole mask making thing, it happened like a crazy frenzy about so buying sewing machines. And I noticed that because I'm in the sewing niche. I'm always like looking for sewing machines on uh, stores and everywhere. I thrift a lot, so I see them. And I haven't seen much of them, many of them. And then I mentioned to my sister, my older sister. And so she's like a professor. She's an art professor, but we grew up with sewing. So she was like curious and she started looking for it. And then all of a sudden she was buying all the sewing machines from from Facebook Marketplace, from Craigslist, from the thrift stores, whatever she saw when she buy it. Now she has a bunch of them at home, but her thing is that she likes to fix them. First off, we're very interested in the design of the machines, and she is also interested in how to bring the machine back to life. So she'll find a machine that's broken or like missing something, and then she cleans it out very nice and fixes it, and then she keeps it. And I'm trying to convince her to sell them. She might sell a few of them, but every time she's like, oh, but that one is so nice. I don't want to get rid of it. But the good thing is because she's super smart, she gave me a bunch of tips when it comes to buying machines, used machines, because I never really paid attention. I just, if I see a machine, I'll buy it. And then I ended up with like bad ones and stuff. This year I already bought a bunch as well, <laughs> but we were very like warm to this idea of having, of buying machines. And that's what I want to share with you today. So I'm going to do this in two parts. The first part, I'm going to tell you all the tips and all the ideas, how you choose and everything. And then in the second part, I'm going to show you a few of my vintage sewing machines. And then I'll show you the features they have, what, I'm, what I look for when I'm uh, buying, and what's the difference and stuff like that. Okay, so let's get started. To me, my first experience with, with a vintage really I guess it was when I first moved to New York and I got, somebody gave it to me, an older, I actually a very old industrial singer. And it was like this very worn out singer machine with the table. It was very strong, but didn't have the reverse. And I used it for a while. I used it for a year, I think. I ended up giving to a friend of mine when I bought a bigger one. And so that was my first experience with it. This is great because it's like the metal stuff. And, and then I guess last year, a couple years ago, I was around here in Vermont and I went to the thrift store in New Hampshire and I bought, I saw a singer there for 15 bucks and I'm like, oh, you're coming with me. So I bought that one. And yeah, that was two years ago. And then last year, I even have some sewing classes that I'm using this mach that, that machine. It was one from the 60s. And it's amazing. It's very strong. I used to, the last few years, I'm always sewing on my new brother, but my new brother got stuck at some point and then just had this other singer one and I was using it and it's really nice. It was very like soft and, and strong. So that was a good one. Unfortunately, it's not here because I took it to my storage and I can show you. That was a good one. And I also have, I have a bunch, but previously I didn't have this. This year I bought most of them. And then I have this, one of those black ones that I bought at a flea market, I think, in Massachusetts, where this guy said, like the guy who used to sew on that machine was 95 years old and he was still using it. He was alive still and he was still using the machine, but then he uh, got rid of it. So I have, I still have that one. It's a beautiful one of those black ones with the decals, the golden decals. 
and yeah, so that is, I, I will save that forever. So that's my experience with it. But let's talk about why would you choose a sewing machine? And I know people like new stuff, right? Usually like we think of something and we're like, let's buy something. For instance, my friend Patricia, who lives in uh, Copenhagen, she is trying to start sewing. She wants to teach her kids. And she called me the other day, a couple of times, and she showed me a picture of the Singer machine that she was like, oh, look at this one, it's for sale. And uh, it was like a hundred dollars, uh, US dollars. And it was like this, pla it was new, but a plastic Singer uh, sewing machine. And then I went very quick on the Copenhagen Facebook marketplace and they have like amazing machines there, like older ones for way less than that, for like $60, $40, like a Bernina, which is like the top notch of a sewing machine, an older one. And then I'm telling Patricia, you should just go for one that will last more. So that's one of the reasons. You want a machine that can handle all of work and that can be strong and won't break as much. A plastic one, yeah, is nice because it comes, it's working, it's not gonna, it's probably not gonna break at first if you don't do anything crazy, but it can really handle everything, okay? So the first thing you can think about, it's what am I gonna do with it? What's my plan? So what's your plan? You just wanna do a few repairs or you just wanna make masks or you just, and it's something that you might not, you're not sure that you want to keep sewing in your life. For me, I know that I'm always going to be sewing. The world can be collapsing. I'll be sewing, okay? And, but for you, you might just want to try. So, and some, what I'm saying is, you might pay less for an older machine than for a new machine, okay? So yeah, that's for me the first reason. So how you want a machine that you can rely on and it can, for instance, that the old one that I have, it doesn't have a reverse, which I'm going to show you what it is and which one, how it works. But I know it can handle heavier fabrics and everything. So that's something to think about, okay? So my sister tips are, the first thing she said is, are you willing to, to get it fixed or you just really want a machine that you need to use it right away? Because when you come, come across a sewing machine, you might be like at the thrift store or looking on, on the internet or something and then you'll be like, can I, do I need to fix it? Okay, and so if you do need to fix it, if you are willing to fix it, if you know a mechanic, somebody recommended you a mechanic, or you have somebody in the family, or somebody in the neighborhood that you know is gonna fix it for you, then fine, then you, you can take the risk of taking a machine that's not like completely functioning and everything. So that's something to think about at first. Also the price, <laughs> obviously. So if you, I see machines for $15, $20, all sorts of prices. So if it's some, if I see a sewing machine that's $20, I'll probably buy it, okay? Although I skipped one last week, but if, because I don't really have room anymore. But if I see one for 15, I'll take the chance. Depends on your budget as well. But so that's the thing. If you can afford to fix it and you're not worried, then you should just buy the first one after I tell you all the tips and then everything works there and then you take it, okay? If you're not willing to fix and then make sure you don't pay a lot for it. It depends on the brand as well. And so if you find a Bernina for $100, I would buy a Bernina for $100 even if it's not completely working, especially if it's not a computerized, computerized one because it would be easier to fix. If I see a mechanic, like, this one I got uh, from Facebook Marketplace is a Bernina Industrial. I haven't had an industrial machine for a while, but then I saw that one and it's not, it's working, but it's not perfect. So I'll ha definitely have to take it to the mechanic, but because it's a Bernina and I know that machine is going to last forever, it's worth for me to fix it. Okay. Okay. That's one thing. Then the second thing is, and that's the, like the most important thing when it comes to choose to deciding at the decision point, right? Is the metal parts. So a machine, a new machine usually is mostly plastic. It will have just a few parts inside that are uh, metal, but as much as plastic they can have, they will because it's cheaper. And let me tell you, a plastic machine is a pain in the butt <laughs> because it move, at least for me, when I'm sewing, if I'm making like a, a canvas bag or something, the machine is moving because it can't handle the fabric. And I know that thing is not going to last much unless it's very expensive. If it's like a fancy machine, 
that's plastic, okay, but okay, if you see like a Bernina that's plastic one, and then you buy it, okay? But usually at a thrift store, you're gonna find those like older ones, the vintage ones that I'm telling you. And so make sure if you see plastic, so how I do is you get a piece of uh, metal and you go like this. And so I know that this is plastic and I know this is metal. And then the most metal it has, the better for you. So if it's like a heavy one, sturdy, that's a good one, okay? So you wanna see if, if it has metal parts. One thing my sister said, this is how I choose, and then her tip is to look at the gears. The machine is made with uh, wheels, right? So there's a bunch of gears inside. I don't know if you've ever seen this image, but for instance, my Bernina, you can open the top here and you see all the gears. And she said, if, if it has gears that are metal, you're good to go because the gears are never gonna break. It's how rarely it will break. But then some machines are plastic. That Bernina is amazing, but it's not, it can't handle like everything because it has a couple of plastic gears. So it's good if, you, if it's possible for you to open the top or ask the person, how is the gear? Some machines open the top. You can always unscrew or that one opens without screws and everything and you'll see inside, okay? But you, if you are at a thrift store, you can really tell but that, so that's something to think about if you're more investing a little more money on it, okay? Yes, uh, the other thing she said, the third tip is working parts. Is it working? And what you can't really tell if it's sewing very well if you're at a, a thrift store or if you're buying from someone else. Usually you ask them, is working? But then they'll be like, yes, of course they're gonna tell you that's working. You can test it. The first thing I do, and my sister agrees, is turn the wheel. So you go, look and you turn the wheel back and forth. And if the needle is moving, sometimes there is no needle, but you, if you see the needle thing is going up and down, at least that's it's a sign that it might work, okay? Okay, that's uh, the first thing. And then the gears, if, if, if this is moving, that means the gears are working. If it has a belt, you gotta make sure the belt is working. Some belts, some machines uh, don't have a belt, an external, but some have when the motor is like out here, especially the old ones, it has a belt. You have to see if that belt is falling apart, if it has any issue. A belt is cheap. If the machine is amazing, it's worth getting a new belt. What else? The motor is something else. There is a, there's always a motor, right? Unless it's a mechanic machine, which the old ones that are like by foot. But you wanna see the, if the motor is working. If it's one of the small machines, and you were uh, at a shop, at a store, you can plug it in and see if it turns on. And what you do is, uh, and that was my sister's uh, recommendation, you just touch the foot pedal a little, Is you just touch it, just to see if it runs. You don't wanna really run the machine right away, especially if it hasn't worked in a long time, right? Because if, so if you don't wanna mess with the machine, that's what she said. So you just wanna test if the motor is working. If it goes, uh, if it's working, the motor is fine, okay? The wheel, the motor, the other thing is, does it have accessories? And sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. Some machines, if it's like a, an expensive machine, like an Elna or a Husqvarna or a Bernina, one of those international ones made in Germany, made in Sweden or Switzerland, the accessories are very expensive. Some a Bernina foot can be like $50. So you wanna see if the, the machine comes with the accessories and if those accessories are the same ones, if it's it belongs to that machine. Because main, many times, and I've been through this, you go buy the machine and the person says, it comes with the accessories. And then when you see the accessories was from other machine and then won't work for this one. So you wanna make sure the accessories work. And the last thing she said when it comes to working parts is if, if it's dirty. Some machines, if it's a little dirty, it's okay, you can clean it. It's, that's her fun, she likes cleaning everything. But sometimes it's so dirty that the, you know, if the person didn't have a good maintenance, didn't take care of the machine, it might get too hard to fix it. Sometimes the pieces get stuck and the linked and everything, you don't wanna deal with that. So make sure it's like somewhat clean and it's not gonna give you too much trouble, okay? Let me see if, yeah, the belt, gears, that's, so if that, and then obviously you look at it and you're like, 
oh, it looks like it's nothing is really broken, the buttons move and everything. So that's a good point. So just recapping that, make sure you're willing to think about if you want to fix it or not. How is your budget? What brand is? I didn't mention that, but think about the brand. Is it a, a singer? An older singer is always good. And if it's one of those made in Germany, made in Switzerland or Sweden and stuff, those are good. Okay. Then think about the metal parts. How many metal parts are there? Does it, is it heavy? Right. If it's heavy, it's because of metal. In another video, we can talk about the newer machines and that new heavy duty, the singer heavy duty. What they did is they made the, and that's, it says that in the box of the sewing machine. The bottom part is all metal. They say most of this machine is metal so it can handle stuff. That's why it's heavy duty because it will handle it. So think about the metal parts. And the other thing is, is the working parts. Are they working properly? Is the wheel moving? Is the motor working? Is the, all well, the buttons are working? And is it clean? What if looking at it, you think it looks good? Okay. The other thing is, she said, never use the same needle. That's not in my list, but I remember. <laughs> and it's important. Okay. Never use the same needle that you bought the machine with, because then it might be sitting there for years, for months or for a long time, and it's not good. So you always want to put a, a new needle. So look for the manual. Sometimes it comes with the manual. If it doesn't, you can look online. All manuals are available online. If it's not, and if it's a company that is still out, Singer, Bernina, all those, you can always email them and they would send you the manual. Even if it's super old, this machine that I got that from the 95 year old guy, I sent to Singer, I said, look, I got this machine, I don't know the manual. And they sent me the manual, it's all hand drawn, it's beautiful. You can always get the manual, so then you know how to replace the needle and always replace the needle, okay? Never keep the same needle. The other thing she said is, you, this is the tip number four, never force anything, okay? You never want to be like, and I'm guilty for that because I'm too anxious and I'm like, oh, this is not working, this is not working. Instead of reading the manual <laughs> and trying to figure out how it works, I keep like f f stressing and then that's not good. You don't want to force it because this is a machine and if it might be sitting for a while and you just want to give time to it, okay, be calm. If you're going to try the motor, just tap it a little, tap the wheel a little bit, the pedal, see if it's working. And then you go ahead and, and take care of it. Okay. And the last tip she said, which is what comes after this and is very cool is if you, if your sewing machine, this vintage sewing machine you got is stuck. Okay. Doesn't mean it's broken. It might be sitting in the garage for a long time. And what you do is you oil everything, make sure you get machine oil, you can get it online or uh, at Joanne's, all places like that. And then you oil everything, look at the manual, see where the places that are oil. I know the number one place you want to put is in this pole here where the, where the needle comes up and down. That pole needs, uh, needs oil. So you put oil there, you put on the buttons everywhere. And then you leave it for 24 hours. Don't do anything. You just put the oil, leave the oil there, and then the machine is going to absorb the oil. And then next day you try to move it. Most likely that will happen. This Bernina I got from, from this wonderful lady and she didn't use it much. And I think she kept it outside. It wasn't broken. It wasn't anything like that, but it was definitely not working well when I first got it. It was like, it was working, but the stitch was weird. The buttons were crazy. And I did this oil that my sister told me. And next day was great and it worked and I started sewing and it's, it's wonderful. The other thing she told me, and it's a fact, even if it's not super dirty, but you got from somewhere else, or it was sitting in a garage or you got from a thrift store that's disgusting, <laughs> you want to clean it. And how would you clean it? Windex? No, don't use anything on your sewing machine. You clean with oil, machine oil. That's the best thing to clean your machine. You go, especially if it's metal, because as you clean, you are also oiling. It's like moisturizing, right? Like our body. So you want to put oil and clean with oil and it works like a miracle. It's amazing. Okay. So that's it. And the one thing I want to tell you just to wrap up is what is a vintage machine, right? That we're talking about in the beginning. 
it is if it's 20 years old, whatever. But one thing we learned oh, with my, my sister Jeannie talking about this and me and all this stuff is the good machines are from before the 90s. Because what, even the singer, what happened is from the 90s to this times, they started selling the companies. And, you know, this whole large production of stuff start, started to happen. And then they lost in quality. So they, I think Singer was sold to another company. Some of the machines were sold. This company was like joined and they started to make elsewhere. And so not, not even the Bernina is made in, in Sweden. It's made somewhere else. So if you want a cool machine, you either spend $2,000 in a new amazing Bernina or something, or you get another one from the 90s. And it's the Pfaff, the German one, Huxvarna. This white brain is good. And another singer, another Bernina. And there are other brains that I can recall right now, but basically before the 90s, when things were made with better quality and there were more metal parts, okay? And my last tip is if you get a sewing machine that, and you're like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? Before you take to the mechanic, before you assume it's broken or anything, join the groups on Facebook. That's like the best secret. <laughs> the groups, uh, there are groups that are specialized because people get crazy about their sewing machines. And I can tell you that happened to me. I got this Elna. Elna is made in, I think it's Switzerland. Yeah, I, I'm looking at it because it's up there. I got two of those. And it was weird, it was missing a... Uh, screw and I got frustrated and then I figured like in, on Facebook there are people that are like it's almost a cult <laughs> especially the Bernina, Elna they're like people really into that and so they have groups so there's the Elna group Elna owners the Bernina owners the Bernina there's a vintage one and there's a new Bernina owners and so you can always ask questions because who hang out with those groups as well the mechanics and they are they like to give tips and the people are very nice and they share the tips so if you have any problem and you're like how do i get this unstuck you go in the group you ask them and then they will uh, give you the answer sometimes you can fix it yourself okay so that's it for this part in the next video i will show you the vintage machines that i have and then i'll tell you why i chose and why i like why i'm keeping it why am i selling them and, and everything Okay, I hope this was helpful to you. If you like it, share, send it to your friends, and thank you.